Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome to, to the Ladies Table Podcast. podcast. Well, I had to get it out quickly because you know Winona keeps trying to pay attention to that little red light. Y'all, why? I take her advice, her advice, mm-hmm. and then she beats me at my game. That's not, no, no, no. I feel like that's cheating. It's not cheating, Winona. That, like, that's playing like, by the real rule of life. No. That's the real rule. No, that's not what they taught me in kindergarten. <laughs> the sharing is caring? Yes. Caring. And, and and so sharing is caring. This is what we're going to go with. Sharing is caring, y'all. Don't don't get it wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, um unless of course you have COVID, then don't share. Please don't share. Please stay in your home. Or like because we're still now like in craziness. So please stay home. Don't don't share. Just stay home, six feet apart from everybody. Wow, that got serious really fast. We were at sharing is caring. Yeah, okay, so anyway, sharing is caring, though. Yes, we're going with it. All right, well, So no. you should share equally. So it should be like, mm-hmm. you know, three, two, one, half beat. Okay, the narcissist start. is like telling me to share. Like, I didn't, <laughs> y'all, the narcissist. Y'all know. No, y'all know we'll know I did not think that's what you were coming out with at oh, all. Oh, I was, I was holding it in, though. I'm Jay, though. I can tell. And I'm Nona. I was just like, the narcissist is telling me to share. I feel, I feel weird about this, y'all. I take it back. Okay, yeah, so we wrote mind. literary life guides with pop poetry, which, I mean, it kind of seems like we don't know anything about life, right? But we do, because sharing is caring. <laughs> so we do, we know that. All right, so, and I thought the voice was bad with other life lessons, and I thought, that is not, and I, oh, that is. I'm yes, sorry. it is, thank you. Ooh. And I thought. Ooh, and I thought being grown up was easy. Uh, let's start with If Only I Were Me, a memoir and verse, and... Winona, anything? I'm going to go with Foreign Coffee and Whittle's Web. I'm going to give two to myself. Because wow, we I only shared, do four. Wait, wait. I shared doubly with me. So you can check all of those about, out on audible.com, amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, and on andwethought.com. If you want an abbreviated version. Go to the lady and uh, I thought ladies, uh, com. I'm just going to say that if you share with yourself double, is that really sharing? Yes. Okay, and now yes. that we're done with that, y'all are here to hear about us argue about sharing. You're here to hear from our wonderful guests. Wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? So I'm uh, I'm Brent Kinsman, and I'm Shane Kinsman. We got both of us here. Uh, we are both 23, uh, living in Los Angeles, uh, and we're actors. Um, you might have known us. Uh, we were child actors as well. You might have known us from uh, Cheaper by the Dozen or Desperate Housewives, were two of the most uh, popular things we were in. Now we're just washed up. Now we're just, now we're just up. you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be washed up like at, at 23. 23. Like that gives me no hope. And if you're washed up at 23, what am I at like 25? Exactly. <laughs> well, well, anyway, I'm just going to tell you I'm slightly jealous of you today because while I look at my cloudy, rainy March day, I bet you all could went to the beach and worked on your tan because I love working on my tan. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty nice here. I, I, I can't even lie. Wait, but I got a buddy who lives in D.C. And he told me that it, it's been nice lately, the past couple It days. has been, though. I have been soaking it up. I've been, like, slathering on my sunscreen and my jacket and went on outside and sat at the beach. <laughs> sunscreen and a jacket. And a jacket. Because I was like, I'm tanning. It's only, like, 63, and the, wood, and the wind is coming off the bay, and it's super cold, but I'm doing it. <laughs> Rushing summer. Rushing it. It's like, it's, like, 75 and sunny, so we can't lie. It's pretty nice. Not to glow. So I might slightly dislike y'all because that's great tan weather and I'm kind of mad about it. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And normally I would just get on the plane and go to LA, but yeah, no. Yeah, no. Not right now. Um, so, okay, we, um, we're supposed to be oh, asking yeah. about serious your career question. and serious <clears throat> questions. But before we Bring it back in. Bring it back in. on that, um, what we did not say before we start our show is if you talk about food, alcohol, or travel, we will get distracted. I'm going to talk about one of those and distract myself. Well, no, no, so really. I just want to know: Have you found any good food in Los Angeles? That, yeah, that's that's real good. Dude, look, you want good like Mexican food, like taco trucks, street tacos, LA, like and everywhere around LA. That's like this is the spot. Which any is- any big silver truck <laughs> that says tacos on it, you're bound to don't find even, something Don't great. even ask like, questions. Just just go there. <laughs> okay, so, all right. So we'll definitely be like, take our money quickly. Okay, we love yeah, it. Thank you. We love it. I well, love I it mean, so much. Every time we go, we end up just drinking juices. Right. And it, we always find great juice bars. Or, never or we have like waitresses that ask me like, are you sure you want that sandwich? Are you, are you sure? 
Should you be eating that? Should sandwich? you be eating that sandwich? Are so we were like, no, sure? we're finding good spots. Thank you so much Thank for you. your uh, recommendation. Okay, now we're going to talk about real. Okay, food. let's go. Professionalism. Let's button it down. Come on. We so, gotta, gotta, um, gotta go like this. Gotta like take your jacket and be like professional. Uh, all right. No, my hair is in the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That so real question gone. number one is. How did you get started in acting and why have you continued so long? And not that you're washed up or anything. It's just amazing that you've been able to maintain it for long. No, so not take it. <laughs> no, so 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 we we were really lucky. We when we were kids, uh, but we were probably four years old, super young. We're Dodger fans, right? Like bleed blue. So we were at a Dodger game one night and he and I, when we were younger, we were just so energetic and just bouncing off the walls and you know exchanging energy and stuff so we were at the dodger game and we uh got up on the big screen a couple like multiple times throughout the game the camera just like totally like loved us the whole time we had the blue hair going and the foam fingers and everything and oddly enough there happened to be like a like a talent agent sitting a couple rows behind our whole family uh at the game and so he approached my dad uh after the game and said hey have you ever thought about putting your kids into child acting you know into commercials and stuff because they seem to have tons of energy and the camera camera likes them and uh yeah just kind of from there things snowballed my dad and and he like exchanged information and through him we booked the first thing we ever booked was a tylenol commercial um where we didn't play twins but we like played the same kid in different scenes like we just kind of like switched off type of thing and it was a really funny, spunky commercial. And then through that, we just kept auditioning and uh, auditioned for Cheaper by the Dozen, got a call back, and the rest is history. And then, and then through Cheaper by the Dozen, we got connected with the producer and director for Desperate Housewives because uh, he saw us in Cheaper by the Dozen. And then from there, things just kind of snowballed, mm -hmm. you know? So but then we haven't, been, we haven't been doing things for a while. We were... 12 i think the last time that we've done any film projects or anything for we did like a um like a flashback episode on desperate housewives and so we just went to uh you know middle school and high school and, and college and just kind of grew up and played baseball and you know made friends and stuff and just you know kid stuff and then somewhere along the line after after college we just weren't ready for like a corporate job or just you know kind of a desk job type of thing and thought how do we give acting? Well, that was about, yeah, that was about three years into college where we kind of bounced that idea around and we weren't super interested in our majors at the time. We both studied agriculture mm -hmm. at, uh, at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. Um, and that was okay, you know, but uh, we're young and have very little responsibility. And, and we kind of bounced this idea back around of, of going back into the industry and then COVID hit and we came back home and had a lot of time to think about it. And so um, that's kind of what we're choosing to pursue right now. Lovely, lovely. I, I love that. Can I just say before we get started, because I am the narcissist, I'm gonna take this moment to talk about me. Three See, sentences. and then this is the one that says sharing is caring, y'all. Just, just keep it. Just keep that in the back of your mind. All right, Doubly let's go. Sharing. Anyway, no, I just told myself this morning. I was like, don't worry. It never happens that a talent agent or somebody is just like in the area and they go, you know, I saw you. Here you go. You should think about it. Thank you for killing my my self talk this morning. My self positive talk. Look, look. It, it happens. It, I feel like, like that's how it happens most of the time. I mean, like they just find people living life and they, you know, they're always on the job. They're always looking for talent and certain personalities. And I mean, it was kind of a godsend for us. You know, we were in the right place at the right time. You know, there's a million factors that could have, we could have not gone to the Dodger game, had different seats. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of funny how life works sometimes like that. But yeah. Absolutely. And well, Nola, you can't be mad because you return to poetry and what happened? Okay, never mind. Moving on. Um, what, no, 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 what happened? No, we really need to know. The world needs to know what happened. I feel like the world already knows. Don't say it one more time, though. We all just Jade needs to know what happened. Oh, it became one of the best books and it got me my best career so far. Oh, oh, best best wow. writing career so far. So best I just wanted to say that because I won that argument. Yeah. <laughs> You're the narcissist. You're being all modest. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Winona is just like, oh, no, no. I, I, I modest you're not modest go ahead stop playing so uh all right so you were studying agriculture why did y'all pick agriculture i mean that's like oh a, we have to unpack that one all, all right, right so do we we're still unpacking it how did they like, like <laughs> no like so i mean we we kind of like in high school played sports football and baseball and stuff and we got into 
uh, kind of like lifting weights and nutrition and like fitness type of thing was, was a big interest and kind of thought that that would be like our career one day. And so we always wanted to go to Cal Poly because in high school we visited San Luis Obispo a few times and it's just a crazy beautiful, you know, place to go to school. And they're an agriculture school because they're plop in the middle of central California. There's a lot of agriculture out there. And at least for me, I'll speak for myself. Uh, I always wanted to like pursue, like I said, nutrition and food and, and wanted to know where food comes from. And because most people don't know uh, even remotely what the process looks like from where, you know, your food is grown or harvested to where it gets to your plate. And there's like a lot of business and steps and things in between uh uh, in between that. And I also thought like, Hey, everybody's got to eat. So there's going to be jobs out there no matter what, you know, at any time. Mm -hmm. so, however, it was, it was one hell of a culture shock. You know, like, <laughs> I remember walking in cause we're, you know, we went to high school in the concrete jungle of Pasadena. And so, um, <laughs> when I got into my first class freshman year, I saw kids wearing those flannel shirts and, you know, kind of trucker hats, a big belt, you know, belt buckles, and, cowboy, and boots. cowboy boots. And I was like, what did I sign up for? Uh, and then, and then one of my first classes freshman year, I learned how to drive tractors on a field. No nice. joke. Nice. So, but it ended up being great, you know. I mean, you can, yeah. You can... Tractors are fun to drive, and that's like what most <laughs> when you're younger, because they get <laughs> yeah. darn slow. <laughs> but um, yeah. So most people that take that, a lot of people that take that are uh, farming children, or and have a farm. I have um, why gold of having. A Oh, then it's also like I was thinking when you were saying that I was like, uh, they said Pasadena, so where happened to the 4 H club people? Where's the 4 H club? <laughs> what 4 H club? Oh, the club, like it's a, a whole thing about like learning how to farm and making it into a business and then turning into agriculture and what kind of seeds are the best. Mentioning that, what was like the coolest part of the agriculture studies? And did you guys get to ever learn about like how to make seeds? Never mind, I'm not going into that. Let's, what was the point? I was like, like oh, yeah. no, no, no. Ooh, did the nerd just come out with Ola? Yeah, like, wh where's your, like, Somebody, somebody's got there. a, somebody's got a green thumb over there, I feel like. <laughs> no. no. I have, one of my degrees is in biology, and one of my favorite things was bioengineering and food, and yeah. then, of course, biogenetics. So, like, I study those two, like, for kicks and giggles. I have a um, question for you, then. Did you, did mm -hmm. you talk about uh, vertical agriculture in bioengineering for food? How cool is that? Yep. That is cool. Is but we're not geeking out on this because I'm not a geek. I am very, very cute and I don't do nerdy things. And she writes books for a living, so that like it's nice everything she gets. Like, Let's go in. <laughs> what was your coolest what was your coolest thing in agriculture though? What's the coolest thing you learned besides the most incredible thing? Driving tractors for sure. Kidding me? Had to be the coolest thing. Like, totally useless skill that you can pull out of your back pocket if ever need be. Just like, yeah, I know how to whip a tractor. Like that John Deere over there, that's mine. Like, easy. So oh, wow. Yeah. I could, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you with that one. I'm with you with that one. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. That's cool. That's okay. Pretty. Now let's get back to your real stuff. <clears throat> right. Um, right. Let's, let's be serious because we promise. Because I was like, yes. And we promise we will be serious and y'all are celebs. So here we go. Suck it back in. Suck it back in, Winona. All right. <clears throat> what kind of acting future are you looking forward to? Meaning, what would be your favorite project to be involved in? Oh, you want to talk about nerd. You want, okay, here we go. So the dream, <laughs> I can speak for both of us. The dream, like the end goal, is to somehow weasel our, weasel our way into Star Wars. Have to. Like, look, have to. Look, we grew up on Star Wars. Like, that was like our thing growing up. Never, like that passion never died in college <laughs> and throughout. And like, honestly, they just have like, the, they're coming out with the coolest movies and content. They just like, obviously last year came out with the Mandalorian and uh, you know, they have the new Ahsoka series. The Obi-Wan Kenobi series is coming out. Look, don't be going. I will go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is horrible. This is, this is horrible. Cause this I mean, we're, we're talking about agriculture, which I love botany. Like I take She's botany, botany for fun. Person. Um, <laughs> so, um, and, and now we're gonna talk about Star Wars. We can't we can't do this, y'all. Come on, we gotta, we gotta say something. That, we gotta have another question that is absolutely like nothing to do. Out of left field. Hey, you asked. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did. So, <clears throat> so how has COVID like affected y'all in your career and and I like rebooting it, it? Rebooting it. Kind of kind of an interesting time to reboot, uh, reboot, sure. reboot the career, but just start any you know any career. Um, 
the industry's been down. There hasn't been much production going on the past, you know, uh, year. Um, and things are now starting to pick back up. And so um, it's actually kind of working out great because we just kind of started getting the wheels turning uh, in January because I was actually finishing school online. And so we were just working and doing school online at that point. But um, we've contacted our old agency. Um, so we're with them now in the commercial department and we're talking with another agent in the UK and just, you know, more and more production is starting to starting to pick up speed uh, speed. So uh, well, we, we think we feel we'll, like we feel like during COVID, like a lot of writers and producers probably sat at home and we're just like conjuring up ideas and just, you know, thinking about projects and stuff. So like when the world, you know, is no longer on fire and things open back up again, we feel like there's just going to be a huge explosion of opportunity um, for creative. I mean, that's my hunch. Oh, absolutely. I think that writers have been writing well. Yeah. You know, considering that we're writers. <laughs> but we write poetry. So well, they're not the same. <laughs> not the same. Not going to help your career at all. No, no. But we were talking to one of our, our friends who um, actually now is a showrunner. But before that, she was kind of doing like producing stuff. And she was like, a lot of the stuff that was in the lineup to be used later on is now being used now because it's like continuously we need to feed the we need to feed the beast of entertainment yeah, so yeah. They're, they're buying a lot more stuff which means a lot more stuff will definitely go into production so yeah it's a pretty cool time if you think about it talk about staying positive i mean that's super positive i mean like totally high five on it has Love- a- I'm not going to lie, because if I was making a rebound and then COVID happened, I'm going to be like, see, that's the world against me again. I can't see how it needed to be more proof. It's right there. Time for mango ice cream. Uh, (laughs) Or champagne. Um, Or both, like why choose? Uh, So what are three um, tips that y'all would give people that are trying to break into the industry? Although you broke into it young still, how did you continue to stay and have such a positive life? (sighs) You know, um, I mean, we were really like you said, we broke in young and we were really well protected by our parents. And so we were raised, um, raised with kind of a, you know, kind of protection over our whole careers and and ourselves as kids. Um, but I have another friend right now that I went to high school with. She's trying to be an actress and she's trying to find an agency. Um, especially in this, in this time, it's been tough for her. And, um, so I guess in terms of advice, I mean, I think the most important thing, and it sounds like a cliche, but they're cliches for a reason, but be, be you, there's a spot for you. You know, I think we're, we're yeah. learning that we don't have to be anybody else because there's, you know, everybody, everybody's, everybody's different and there's a spot for you. You know, um, I think that combined with persistence is probably the way to go. And I mean, we've been really fortunate because we developed connections when we were younger and we've been utilize, utilizing those uh, lately and not everybody has that opportunity. But um, I think, like I said, just being you and, and, and carving your own path based on, you know, following your heart is kind of the most important thing. Again, cliche, but very, very true in our experience. Well, it's hard. It's hard because when you get in front of a director or producer, you just want to give the best performance possible. And uh, sometimes we think as actors that that looks like acting more and being more theatrical and more out there. Whereas, um, you know, especially for the uh, film and commercial climate today, a lot of the projects, a lot of the the actors are much more grounded and they're less theatrical, you know, sell you a car type of thing. And they're just much more kind of real. So, uh, yeah, kind of kind of like what Brent said, just be authentic and and be grounded. Well, and that's the thing is because people, audiences and direct and casting directors alike can sniff out authenticity. And we like that as people, you know, audiences like that, um, casting directors like that, actors like that. So I think the closer you can be to yourself and be authentic, uh, you got to trust that directors and people looking for talent will pick up on those subtleties and, and like you for yourself. So, yeah, um, that's probably the most important thing in our experience so far. Oh, wow. I love it so much. I know, right? That, that was great advice. I, I feel, know. I feel like, I feel like, yay. I feel like I'm reinvigorated again to be like, no, let's give this a try. We should go. <laughs> Go back, go, back to what? go back to where? To the ice cream? To yeah. the champagne? Like, yeah. where are we going back to? I don't I don't know. That's okay, true. so, oh, that's really awesome. Where can people follow you online, like social media? Oh, uh, yeah. You can find us on Instagram. That's where we're most active. Uh, my handle is Brent Kinsman 7 I believe. And then Shane's is... Mine is Shane underscore Kinsman. Yep. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, Thank yeah, you we're so much not. for coming on the show. We really appreciate and, it. And um, de- patiently dealing with us. I know. That's... Last. So it's totally. fun. 
Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and wrap this up, right? Yes, please, Jay. Y'all can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com or for the abbreviated version at www.theandithoughtladies.com. But while you're on www.andwethought.com, take a moment, go to the ladies tab, go to the middle, and see the charities that we call and support. You can support them also. And just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love you guys from Winona. And Jade, bye-bye. Oh, yeah, thanks for listening.